Today our topic is Basic Principles of Designing Warehouses and Distribution Centers Unfortunately, most of the time warehouse design is taken for granted and neglected in terms of investment and consideration with overall supply chain strategy. The goal of warehouse and DC designing is to optimize the warehousing operations, achieve maximum efficiency and optimum space utilization. An optimally designed DC will concurrently increase customer service levels and decrease operational costs. With customer expectations rising, need for speed, service reliability, and better costing challenge companies for a better management of warehousing functions is becoming more important. Let's discuss some of key principles of a warehouse or DC designing which not only make you a seasoned designer but also help you to understand the salient aspects of the design task, and help you plan your facility for optimal performance. Determining the flow of goods. Try to keeping manual handling minimal. Evaluating the options. Consulting all stakeholders in the design process. Now let's discuss these principles one by one in detail. Key Principles Applicable to a Warehouse or DC Designing First of all, determine the objective of the facility, define the volume and its functional requirements, then match the storage modes, ID systems and mechanized technologies with volumes. First principle is determine the objective of the warehouse or distribution center. The first step is to define the objectives and goals of the warehouse or distribution center by finding out. Why will it exist? What market does it serve? Is it part of a distribution network? What types of goods will be stored? What is the anticipated life of the facility? Will it be a greenfield site or an existing facility? It is vital to write these objectives down so that all associated parties remain cognizant of the expected outcome, especially when timing, budget, or resource issues during the project tempt stakeholders to compromise operational or design goals. Importance of Determining the Objectives of the Warehouse and Distribution Center The Efficiency, Effective Utilization, Running Costs, Working Environment of Warehouse all depend on its objective, so it is very important that we know it. Knowing objectives clearly helps to make the decisions about its size, physical design, Proportion of indoor warehousing versus outside yard space, location, dimensions, structural composition, provisions to be made for specialized equipment installations and division between storage and working spaces, defining volumes and functional requirements. After defining the objectives, let's now find out the volume it holds and functions it performs. We can divide it into four parts. A. The quantities of products to be stored. B. The amount of work items delivered in a given period of time, for example week, month, quarter, including, incoming goods, customer orders, interfacility transfers, dispatches, and returns. C. The nature of orders and specific picking requirements, for example as picking performed in containers, pallets, cartons, inners, or single units. D. What functions need to be provided for. Included on the site footprint, for example, warehouse, offices, gantry cranes, loading docks, forklift charging areas, dangerous or hazardous goods, cool or cold rooms, clean rooms. The goal of warehouse and DC designing is to optimize the warehousing operations, achieve maximum efficiency and optimum space utilization. An optimally designed DC will concurrently increase customer service levels and decrease knowing volumes and functional requirements are very important because warehouses are very expensive capital investments, so when we design a new one, be sure that business will not outgrow its volumetric capacity or throughput capabilities too quickly. It's not just about storage space to consider but other requirements as well, like how many doors or docks will be optimal for incoming and outgoing volumes of goods, matching the storage modes, ID systems and mechanized technologies with volumes. Once the objectives, volumes and requirements are determined, the designer is ready for equipment selection. Be it static racking equipment, mezzanines and the like, or mechanical equipment such as conveyors, carousels, stacker cranes etc., 
All equipment and systems must be applied according to their purpose, limitations, and suitability for the volumes handled. For instance, it is a waste if an automatic storage and retrieval system is installed, when a conventional racking system will suffice. Equally, if the facts justify a high-velocity automated system, it is foolish to ignore them for the sake of a more conventional system. This is a complex area and deserves careful consideration. Designers should consult material handling equipment and software suppliers, builders, and industry specialists to ensure the design is well-founded, robust, and practical. One critical aspect of equipment selection is that the designer should have an expert understanding of the equipment and technology available, and knows how to apply them. Determining the flow of goods is another important principle in the warehouse designing. A skillful designer usually apply two immutable laws of flow A, one-way flow, B, flow versus capacity. The best warehouse operations are adhering to one-way flow, whether straight, clockwise, counterclockwise, up or down, make sure the flow is one way only. In flow versus capacity, in this rule of flow the free movement has priority over storage capacity. If you are pressed with a choice, the pundits agree that it's better to hold flow protected, as opposed to building more stock or storage equipment. Importance of determining the flow of goods is very important because long after the warehouse construction is complete, a team has to work efficiently and safely in the warehouse year after year. Beware the possibility of suboptimal performance over the facility's lifetime if the design compromises on the size and quantity of vials, for the sake of more stock holding, keeping manual handling minimal. Design the warehouse or DC is such a way that manual handling minimized. Ideally no more than 3 to 5 touches while goods are in the warehouse and operations those handle goods more times due to severe design or building constraints are often at the root of higher cost. Evaluating the options. During designing all the options must be evaluated to ensure that objectives are achieved efficiently and effectively. There are two common approaches to evaluation. A. Quantitative analysis. B. Qualitative analysis. In quantitative analysis, the return on investment, payback, cost per order to supply, cost per order cubic meter to name just a few are analyzed. Whereas in qualitative analysis, the advantages and disadvantages of options considered are reviewed. Consulting all stakeholders in the design process. As part of the development process, all should be regularly consulted on planning and legal matters, operational needs, preferences, ideas, and opinions because no single party has all the background and knowledge to implement a warehouse or DC project. The best implementations feature a cohesive and dedicated team charged with managing the project from early design through to completion, involving all executives, managers, operators, equipment suppliers, builders, architects, and councils is very important in designing process. Last few words, I hope after listening this presentation you have understanding about an effectively designed warehouse and you will be able to give input in the designing of a warehouse. If you have any question, please do comment. Thanks.